everybody. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas welcoming you to the Royal London Theatre here in London, England for our main event of the evening. We are looking forward to this fight, especially after seeing what happened at the weigh-in yesterday. A stare down that nearly resulted in a bout breaking out right there. Now they get to do it for real. Fellas, let's have a good clean fight. Touch him up and let's go. Come on, kid. Scheduled to go the full 10 if we get that far. Round one underway. Up top with the right hand. George Foreman's ability to punch, to flat out put forth power puts people in the seats. Early on, that's what they expect to see here. And early on, sometimes too much of a good thing, guess what, it can be dangerous, it can backfire. If he lands a punch and it doesn't get rid of the guy, well, what else can he do? What happens then? Good block by George. Halfway through round number one. Back to the body. Keeping his hands up, getting way of his opponent's effort. A little head hunting with the right. So right from the start in this fight, he's committed to the body shots. Well, that's the time to go there right at the beginning because body work pays off for you later in the fight. No sense in wasting time. Get right to it. He just missed that shot up top. Last 10 seconds. End of the round. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you ringside. He just didn't throw enough, Teddy. I mean, you got to go out there and put something forth if you want to win the round. Hey, sometimes it's complicated. Sometimes it's pretty simple. You don't throw punches, you don't win fights. your hands up, all right? You have to keep your hands up. Okay, listen, I need you. Here we go, round two is underway. Hits him in the mug with the right. George Foreman's defense is now serving him well. Nice job blocking that punch. Parries that punch away. Foreman's missing the mark by a mile. That just was nowhere to be found. Halfway through this round here. George Foreman's cheek is cut. You can see it's opening up now. Boy, that could be a factor later on. 
Jones. Listen, everybody likes to see a great knockout shot to the chin. But truth be told, at this stage of a fight, the foundation for winning comes by going downstairs. It's just like the old timers would say, Joe, you kill the body, the head will follow. Scores well to the head with the right hand. This round comes to an end. A round in which this fighter threw a lot of punches, didn't land a lot of punches. I'll tell you, what advice can you give to him if you're the trainer? Well, first of all, deal with the psychological part. Joe, don't forget, 75% of this game is psychological. Don't let him get discouraged because even though he's not going to say nothing, in his head he's starting to get discouraged. Just say to him, hey, listen, you're going to catch him. Let's shorten him up a little bit. And you know what? He's moving his head, so go to the body. Because now you're going to hit him a little in the body because the body's not moving. And round number three is underway. There's a right hand. Foreman's just punching air that time. His opponent was able to get out of the way. Nice block by George Foreman. Foreman's defense did a good job there, able to avoid that punch. Some more head Reaching the halfway head mark of this way. round. And now he scores with that left to the body. There he is from long range using that jab. So if you're on the outside, say at a picnic, you want to keep those insects away, you use insect repellent. While you're on the outside as a fighter, you want to keep your opponent away, that jab, that's the way to go. Foreman's got a way of just getting away from that punch. Good, solid right hand lands. Well, he may be in bad shape, but all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he's able to avoid punches and survive. You know, boxing is a funny business. It's a metaphor for life. You know, sometimes you have somebody outside and they don't say what they want to say. They have to have a drink. A little alcohol to start saying the things that are on their mind. Sometimes a fight is no different. You know, he gets hurt. And now all of a sudden, all his inhibitions are gone. And now he's doing all the things he's supposed to do because he's not thinking about anything except the things he should have been thinking about. It's automatic. Keep it up, all right? Very well. You need to move your head more, okay? Side to side. Lean to the side. Ooh, counterpunch. Where's your body work? Hit the body. Round number four is underway. Teddy's got it a clean sweep. How about that left hand? Able to show you his blocking ability. Do you see any way in which he can take his opponent's aggression and turn it against him? Yeah, the perfect way. I mean, boxing 101, counter punching. You got a guy coming at you, no better way than to change his mind. Make him miss, make him pay. seconds to go in round number four.
underway here. He's hoping that it doesn't look like the last stanza where he was knocked down. Well, this is a sport and a profession where hope is attached to something very tangible. You know, it's not just a notion. We hope. But it's attached to his jab. It's attached to his head movement. He has a good jab. He has good head movement. Guess what? He has hope. He'll be okay the next round. He is damaged badly there. He may hit the floor. Now, this is a byproduct of his energy level being low. He's desperate, so he ties up his opponent. Well, this is part of being a fighter. This is part of being a pro in anything you do. There's times where it's all going your way. There's times where you got to make it go your way. You got to make an adjustment. He's doing what he has to do. George Foreman's given us a good showcase of defense here tonight, especially up top. His head movement is just sublime. And his opponents cooperating with him a little bit because he's getting frustrated. He's looking for that big shot, and he's continuing to miss. He's making no adjustments. A guy's moving his head. You know what you want to do a little bit? What's that? Well, you want to feign him a little bit. Make him make a premature move. And then when he moves to either side, then you time him with a punch. Don't just go out there flailing away. Right hand serving him well. Keep working the jab. You can see the cut that started above his eye there. You see him holding on. That's a big uppercut that just crashed home. one gives one the right hand scores well ten clicks of the talk All up. you had in that round you're in control you next round let's keep busy All right. oh, we need more nice one. beautiful beautiful you don't need that no throw that away Cover up, okay? You're leaving yourself open too much. It. Cover up! And with the start of this round, the halfway point of this fight. Covers up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Very nice work to the head. The right hand landed. His opponent wanted the body. He wouldn't give it to him. What's the body? Keep moving. Keep moving. Blocks the headshot. Reaching the halfway point of round number six. 
Foreman's defense clearly caring things right now for him. But what else should he be conscious of beyond just this good footwork we're seeing? Well, the old times would say, hey, you're doing the hard part. You're making a miss. Do the fun part. Make sure he pays. And an excellent uppercut by George Foreman. George Foreman with a big punch. Move your head. Get the death, 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 death. Takes one, but gives one. Good work by George Foreman. Committing to the work downstairs with the left. Good biting, snapping shot by George Foreman. And that does it for this round. George Foreman's in control of this fight, Teddy. Sometimes you can just look at it and see it as clear as day. He's ahead on the scorecards. Yeah, I have my head on my scorecard, too. But right now, he can't afford to coast because this guy is still dangerous. He has to still stay on his P's and Q's. Don't let him breathe. He's hurt. Get him in this round. The action starts up again, but it's only favored one man. Hard to see this fight going the distance based on what we've witnessed so far. That's a good block by George Foreman. Foreman's in a good rhythm defensively here. Big shot. Can he get up from this? He's done it before, but can he get up from a second time down? So now the question becomes, after that knockdown, and he has gotten up, how does he survive? So this is where instincts kick in. You got to start moving that head automatically right now. You don't want to stay in the middle. He took a go of it to the body, but came up empty. At the halfway point of round seven. Imagine throughout your career, you've been all over a lot of fighters for lack of movement. Yeah, it's very, very frustrating because you start to wonder, does he want to win a fight? That's what you start to wonder. Coming towards the end of the seventh round, 10 seconds to go. And we come to the end of the round. He's got nothing left, okay? Just go for the head. Knock him out. Get done. You gotta give me the double jab. You're not giving me the double jab. You need to capitalize on his misses, okay? I want to see that counter hook. Make him pay for his misses. So the beginning of the eighth round is upon us. Foreman's had it his way. He has scored knockdowns, and he is just dominating. Yeah, now it's his fight to win or throw away. And the only way he doesn't win it is he gets careless. Threw the straight right hand, but didn't score with it. Keep on 
Locks that belt line well. George Foreman showing that he's got some defense of his own. He got away from that punch. Good flush shot upstairs. George Foreman's doing something that not everybody appreciates, but he is making his defense a major factor in this fight. Yeah, well, a lot of times people, you know, they only get it done on one end. What I mean about that is, you know, offensively, they use the jab, they use aggression to set up the offense, but he uses defense to set up the offense. He, he has a double-edged sword. Well timed by George Foreman. He took a step back, landed the counterpunch. Exactly what he wanted to do. And now he brings the left hand upstairs. Foreman's movement's really helping him out, avoiding that punch. That is a strong uppercut there. He is not in good shape. He could be on the deck in moments. Boy, he was hurt, but now he's gathered himself a bit. So he puts forth another punishing display. George Foreman's dominating this fight from start to finish, and the end is getting near. Yeah, and his opponent's looking like he's got Everlast written on his forehead. I mean, he looks like a bag. I was good. He took a lot out of him that round. Keep that up. Nice work. He can't handle the speed. It's too much for him. Keep it up. Keep it up. Listen, why not pick up where you left off? Remember, he was so badly damaged in the last round. You got to think his opponent should be all over him here. Could be an opportunity. Sometimes you got to take something that's dark, that's really bad, and turn it around, find the good. Maybe he can find the opportunity to catch his opponent coming after him a little careless. Keeps his hands up defensively, protecting the head. Foreman's getting back to basics. A good, solid jab. Good work, the body. Kid. Five Keep moving. Keep moving. That hook was well off the mark. 90 seconds into the ninth round. Beat him to the body. He just hit out. Scores up top with a left. Rocked by a huge hook to the head. And that's the end of round nine. Listen, he's a veteran guy. He knows the truth of the situation. That's a really bad cut. The kind of cut that can end the fight. Yeah, he has a gamble right now. You know, just got a last call in the casino. They just said, you know, you got three more rolls of the dice. He's got to roll them. He's got to blow on them. He's got to do everything. Focus. You have to focus. Okay, listen to me. When he misses with a punch. This is it. Tenth and final round as they face off against each other. Teddy, I'm starting to wonder 
What is the answer for this guy? Can he do anything else than this? Yeah, he throws punches, but he has no accuracy. Can this change in mid-fight? Well, it has to if he wants to win this fight. And how does it change? Well, you know, the problem is these things have to be put in place in the gym. I don't know if you could do it right now, but if you could, you'd tell him in the corner, hey, tighten up a little bit, you know, shorten up these darn punches. Mark Kick by George move. Foreman. There you go. Look at good. Look good. Halfway through this tenth and final round. King move. King move. Head body. Head body. So there's the final bell in a fight nobody thought they'd hear the final bell in. No, it looked like Rock'em Sock'em Robots early on, but then all of a sudden, guess what? They started boxing. That's a well-earned victory by George Foreman. And it's nice to see when not only all three judges have it for him, but your scorecard agrees. Yeah, it is. That doesn't mean I'm going to hang out with these guys or go to dinner with them afterwards, but right now I'm going to say job well done, guys. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Thanks for being with us. Enjoy the rest of your evening.